What's up everybody? Well, I got another video for you guys today and today I'm going to try, keyword is try, to fix this Asus G15 Advantage. Now, I'm not going to sit here and show you every step of the way. I just wanted to at least show some of the steps I'm going to go through. So first, I went and bought some new cryo sheets because I personally don't think we gave them a fair shot in the last video. I think most of the bad restarting was due to my application of that K5 on the VRMs. And I think like at least 11 to 15 people have agreed with me so far. So I'm just gonna get rid of the K5 altogether. And this time around, we're gonna go with this guy, if it'll focus. There we go. It's uh, some CXH 1300. And at least on the seller I bought it from, I bought the biggest one. They didn't have the 70 in stock. So I went with 50, hopefully that's enough. Should be enough because you don't really need that much. You just need a very thin layer. I just need to copy what I did with that Thermal Grizzly Extreme stuff. Same kind of uh, concept, just obviously don't use thermal, uh, thermal paste as thermal putty. I'm sure it looked like it was drying out quite a bit. So that's why I wanted to move to the K5. And then I found out how hard K5 was to work with. So I didn't like that. So we're going to try this. And then if these cryo sheets suck, well then we're gonna get some PTM right here. I've only got it out of my cold closet for this video and then I'm gonna go plop it back in there. I don't want it to heat up and become hard to work with. You gotta keep this stuff cold, like in the refrigerator or in a cold part of your house, like the basement or garage or something like that. If you keep it in room temperature, it'll be hard to manage. So now I'm gonna go get this laptop all open and I'll show you the reason why I think this is working and why everyone else thinks it's not working. All right guys, we got the laptop open and this right here is the problem, I think, and lots of other people think. There's way too much of that stuff on there, and apparently it's not very good to begin with. And then that's not all of it. So the only thing I did before starting the video is I got rid of all the liquid metal I tried because I didn't have any PTM left, or I couldn't even find any decent thermal compounds. So I figured in case I do get it to work, hopefully I got, you know, something good. So I use liquid metal, the last little bit I had, but here's the rest of that coop. So as you can see, way too much of it because at first I thought I used a decent amount but then it started doing this stuff so I added more and more which was the opposite thing I should have done but hey I'm man enough to admit when I made a mistake and that was a huge mistake more is less like I had with the uh, thermal grizzly extreme stuff it was the wrong stuff to use but I had the right idea there with the you know small amount it goes a long way so now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try to get all that off which is probably gonna take me some time but after that we will apply our CH1, or what is that? CXH, that's what it is. 1300 thermal putty on there. And hopefully that stuff will spread a little bit easier. But only one way to find out, gotta get this stuff cleaned off first. So we will return. Well, all right, guys. We got it as clean as I'm willing to get it. We got all of it off of the spots where the heat sink touches. We got all of it off of all of those heat sinks too. I finished up with some alcohol and a Q-tip and really got all of it off of there. So now that we got that out of the way, I know it doesn't look perfect. I mean, maybe if I sat there for another two hours, I could get, you know, 95% of it off of there, but I really don't care. I don't think any of that is why it's restarting or shutting off. I think it had to do with the cooler not making good contact with the thermal putty and the, in these VRMs and chokes and stuff right up there. I think that's where we got into trouble. But now we've got this stuff. So I'm gonna try putting that on now and I'll show you guys what I come up with. I'm gonna try to make a little as possible, just a little bit. And then hopefully we won't have any issues and everything will be awesome. And then I'm gonna put those cryo sheets on last. That way I'm not blowing them all over. They're so light and so easy to move around. And I'm also gonna try to the key word is try. They're also very fragile. So if you try to cut them, sometimes they'll just snap in half and whatnot. So I'll try to get them, you know, as good as they can get. The CPU one was pretty close, but that GPU one, I think I had it spilling off to the sides and stuff, and that's probably not good for contact. So I'll try to probably cut that one, but we'll see what, how I feel like when we get to that step. <laughs> so now I'm going to go get this CHX 1300 thermal putty put on and we'll be back when it's all on and we can see how good of a job or how bad of a job I did. All right, we got our new thermal putty down and I made sure to use the little finger condom thing to smush it down really thin. So the hardest part with it was getting these fricking silver things that are raised up a little bit. 
anytime I tried to shove some down, it would just stick to my little finger thing. So it might look like there's a shit ton there, but we should not have the same problem we had last time. This thing, this guy should be able to just go right back on there. So I'm hopeful. And then before we obviously put that back on, if we don't put some cryo sheets on our CPU and GPU, we are in for a bad time, an even worse time than we had before. Then we'll get, you know, shutdowns due to one of those overheating. So anyway, let's go and do the cryo sheets just real quick. You know, they might not work. This, they might, this might just be a way too terrible of an application for them. But hey, I wanted to give them a fair shot. I think last time the other compound thermal putty stuff got in the way and made it so they didn't make good contact or something. Or actually, no, I don't think they were actually even having bad contact. I wasn't overheating anywhere there, but I didn't really check the VRM temps or anything. So if that's why we were restarting, well, then that's why we were restarting. We might have fried something. Who knows? But I'm hopeful that we can get this thing back on the frickin' path of workingness. But anyway, I'm going to work on getting these cryo sheet guys attached and cut down if I decide to cut them down. And then we'll come back real quick, show you what those look like when they're on there again, and then we'll get to putting the cooler back on. All right, I completely forgot to show you guys the cryo sheets being placed, but I mean, it's really just setting a sheet on there and being having to set this down very, very carefully so you don't, uh, you know, move them around. Because if they move out of place, you're gonna get no contact because it ain't gonna be there. Some people use a little tiny thermal compound in each corner, but I didn't even want to do that. Get out of there, cat hair. Who said you could be in my laptop? Anyway, so I pretty much just put the three little safety screws in for now so the cooler ain't going nowhere. I still have to take my fans back out the stupid way I do it because I don't want to get stuff twisted and twisted around these heat pipes and bend those. You bend your heat pipe, you're, you're screwed. So I'm going to take these fans out. As you can see, I cleaned the fans finally. So top and bottom, really, really good. So. The rest of the laptop besides the goop from the old thing popping out there. And I guess I went a little overboard on this, but it wasn't like popping the thing up, you know. So we should be all good. As long as we're getting good contact now. If not, I might honestly just go back to thermal compound all over it and say screw thermal putty. Because <laughs> at least that way I had good contact, you know. But I think I did a much better job this time. But that's just my opinion. But except for there, I think I went a little bit too overboard right there. But it's not like these things are like bending or anything to get out of the way. I mean, if I push down on them really hard, nothing really happens. I mean, a little bit of goop came up through that little center there. So we can kind of just get rid of that. Wipe it off on your pants. But it doesn't really matter. No one's seeing that anyway. As long as it's not pushing up and making our GPU and CPU get bad temps. That's what we're trying to prevent and just have it make good contact with all the VRMs and all the freaking memory. Because if those aren't making good contact, you're gonna get horrible cooling and then something's gonna throttle and it's gonna shut off just like it was, so. Nothing should be throttling anymore. So before I forget, let me get those guys out and get the little plastic things out of the way. Otherwise, you're gonna have a really bad time. Well, all right, we are back together. So first, let's make sure it even turns on anymore because if it doesn't even turn on anymore, well, we sure have taken a step backwards because at least before it turned on. So as usual, I'm gonna take me my little hit as long as I don't drop my lighter on my foot, which would hurt a lot because my lighter is not just a Bic. Mine's a solid metal lighter. That would not feel good. Wouldn't break any bones or anything, but definitely don't want it to happen. Anyway. All right. Okay, well, we got a picture. It's turning on. Sound still works. Let it 
sign in real quick. And we don't really need Wi-Fi, but I'm just curious to see if it even works. Do I have Wi-Fi? Yep, it sees it. Just wanted to make sure the Wi-Fi chip was still okay. We don't need any of that right now anyway. I just want to see if the damn thing spins the fans up real fast or keeps restarting randomly. Either that or I freaking broke my fans. I don't even hear them running. Yeah, I know you can't. You don't have any internet. Of course you can't connect to the server. <laughs> All right, well. Yeah, neither fan is on. Uh-oh, hope I didn't break my fans now. Although it might just be so quiet because it hasn't heated up enough. So I'm just gonna sit here for a little bit, make sure it doesn't just restart. Then I'm gonna try to run some Cinebench, because if it can't do anything intensive, who cares how long it can sit on the desktop, right? All right, guys, I got Cinebench open now. I put it on manual mode just to make it go as high wattage as it possibly can on the CPU. So this is this is not a, you know, oh, can I get the highest score? No, it's probably gonna not get a great score. I'm probably gonna get around 10,300, 10,500. That's who I usually get. But hey, maybe it'll surprise me. But more so than not, this is a, is it going to restart as soon as I hit that multi-core test button? That is the question. So let's take a quick hit. Almost hit it too early. All right, never mind. My lighter is out of fluid. Luckily, I have a spare in my pocket. All right. We got our head out of the way, so let's do a quick multi-core test and see if it just shuts off or restarts or does anything goofy or gives us like 8,000 scores. So that way we would know that the CPU is super throttling. Hopefully it'll just be 96, 97 like it used to be. I'll take that. I know I'm not going to get any lower than that. Not unless I undervolt the CPU and do a bunch of other work, which I might do now that I've got a, well, not a working Alienware, but I have an Alienware laptop and hopefully that will be in working order too. But I'm also hopeful that this too will not restart or do anything lame and we'll just be good. Cause after this, if it can get through this, I'm gonna go try some 3D Mark. Cause it made it through a 20 minute ish YouTube video that I watched just sitting on the desktop and it didn't restart, crash, shut off or anything like that. I had Cinebench just sitting on there like doing nothing besides sitting there. Now the fans were going crazy, but that's just the way I have manual mode set up. I think I have them set to go basically to 100% as soon as it hits like 75 degrees or something on the CPU and same for the GPU. So they go freaking ape shit wacko. All right, what did we get? All right, we got better than I was expecting. And we even have like Cinnabon or uh, What's that? Hardware info running in the background. We got 11,000 to nine. Usually I'm in the 10,000, so hell, I'll take that. Especially considering that it's sitting there with a bunch of stuff open in the background. We're not trying to get a good score or anything. So I'll take it. It's nowhere near as good as some people's, but didn't restart yet. And that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead, get Cinebench, or not Cinebench, get 3D Mark started. And we'll see if it can do a 3D Mark without shutting off or doing anything. And then I'm going to hopefully say it's pretty much fixed if it can get through all that. But I'm not ready to call it stable then even if it can do all that. It's got a lot to prove to be stable. But it's already doing a million percent better than it was before. So I think we're on the right track. So let's move on to 3D Mark then. Well, unfortunately, we didn't fix Jack. I went to go start the 3D Mark and it shut right off. So I think the 6800M is just toast just like my 7900M is toast. So it seems to be fine for sitting on the desktop doing CPU tasks, but as soon as you activate that 6800M, it instantly shuts down. 
and I looked all around there. I don't see any like liquid metal that got anywhere it shouldn't. But for all we know, maybe it got underneath that little protective thing and it bridged some connections under there and fried something for all we know. It's hard to say, but I made sure to put thermal compound on everything it should have. It's not too much this time. So I think this laptop unfortunately is just toast. So it is what it is, but hey, I'm glad we at least gave it a try. So I'll have to buy a different one, especially if I'm gonna be down and not have an Alienware either until they finally send me a new one. So I'll have to see what I can do. I think somebody offered me his, but I'll also check eBay and see what I can find there. But it's not like this is a super common laptop, so I don't really think I'm gonna have good luck. But it's worth a shot, you know? Sucks I couldn't fix it. I got all excited when it was like not crashing for like 20 minutes and could do Cinnabon runs and all that. But nope, as soon as we started that uh, 79 hard M, it wasn't having it. Did not like that. So I'll probably try one more time to open it up and maybe replace the thermal pads with some uh, PTM because maybe the CPU, what you would call it, uh, cryo sheet is doing an okay job but maybe that gpu one even though i cut it to proper width and length and everything this time maybe it still doesn't make good enough contact so as soon as that 6800m turns on it goes ah, ah i'm up to like 95 or whatever the hell i think 95 is its max and then it just goes nope we're shutting off to protect who's to say but i'll still probably try that off camera real quick and if that doesn't work then I'm just gonna say that this thing's toast. Well, unfortunately the PTM didn't help either. No matter what, as soon as we give the GPU an actual intensive task, it ain't having it and it shuts right off. So somehow, some way we must have fried the power delivery to the 6800M or something. That's my guess. Or maybe a long time ago, like the first time I messed with stuff, maybe I got some liquid metal just started to go underneath those little protective things and maybe it found its way under there and now it's bridging the gap and it's just shutting off over and over again. So I might go in there and try and take that little, what I think it's like wax or maybe it's plastic. There's like a little plastic protector for all those little transistors. Kinda wanna just take that off randomly and see if anything snuck under there. And if it did clean it off, try one last time. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. In this video, I'm just gonna consider the thing basically dead. I'm just gonna wait for a little while, maybe a week or two and then try again. So on that unfortunate note, it was still fun making you guys this video and trying to get this thing working. And I was trying to stay positive, but it just wasn't meant to be. It must have just gotten killed by me opening it up one too many times. But it is what it is, no big deal. Hopefully I'll get the Alienware working and the next one of those is not also a pile of crap. Otherwise, I think I'm done with Alienware too and we'll just go to a different, diff somebody else, I don't know, like, I don't, like, I don't know, someone. But unfortunately, Alienware is the only guys who have that 7900M for now, but that might change. But I need a laptop, so I don't have time to wait around. So hopefully that one works. But anyway, I'm blabbing on and on. I'm just kind of sad that it didn't work, but whatever. I hope you guys still enjoyed the video because I sure as hell enjoyed making it for you guys. And until the next video, Peace out, guys.